In this video, we're going to write a program in C to replace a specific line of text in a file. So for example, if we have a file like this with five lines of text in it, the program should ask the user for the line number to replace. And maybe the user picks line number three. The program should also ask the user for the replacement text. And maybe the user enters A, B, C, D, E, F, G. After the program is run, file.txt should be the same except for line three. It should be replaced with the text a, B, C, D, E, F, G. So the way we're going to solve this problem is we're actually going to have our program create a temporary file. And we're going to write each line of the original file into that temporary file, except for the line number where the user wants to replace the text. For that line, we're going to write in the replacement text instead. Then we'll delete the original file and we'll rename the temporary file to have the original file name. From the perspective of the user, the text in that file will have been replaced. So let's write the C program for this now. The first thing we'll do is include string.h because the string.h library includes several helpful functions for working with strings that we're going to use when writing our program. We'll also include stdbool.h because this library will allow us to make a Boolean variable, which is going to be useful in our program as well. We're going to have to store the file name of the file to be opened as well as the temporary file in a character array. So we'll define a constant value for the size of those character arrays. We'll say number define, file name size, 1024. And 1024 characters should be plenty of space for any reasonable length file name. We're also gonna have to store each line from the file into a character array. So we'll define a constant for that as well. We'll say number define max line 2048 characters. And that should be plenty of space for the characters for a specific line in a file. We could increase both of these if need be just by increasing these numbers. So we're going to need some file pointers because we're going to want to open up the original file as well as the temp file. So here we'll say file star file and star temp to create those file pointers. We're going to need character arrays to store the file name as well as the temp file name. So here we'll say car file name, file name size, and car temp underscore file name, file name underscore size. We're also going to need a character array to store each line from the file that we're going to read in and write to that temporary file. We'll create a character array buffer to store those. We'll say car buffer, and it will have max line size. We're also going to have to store the actual replacement line that we're going to ask the user for. So we'll need a character array for that as well. We'll say car replace, and it'll have a max line size. We're also going to have to ask the user for the line number that we want to replace. And we're going to have to store that somewhere as well. So we'll make an int variable for that. We'll say int replace line is equal to zero. Now we can start asking the user for some of this information, like the original file name. So here we'll say printf file, and we'll prompt the user for the file. And then we'll say scanf percent %s, and we'll store the file name entered into the file name character array. Next, we're gonna need the temporary file name and the way we're going to obtain that is we're going to prepend the text temp underscore 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 onto the file name. And we'll use these string functions to do that. So here we'll say strcpy temp file name temp underscore 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 underscore. So this strcpy function, that's a string copy function that comes from the string.h library. And what we're doing is copying into this temp file name character array that as of now is blank, the text temp, and then four underscores. And then we're going to concatenate on the original file name after this. So we'll say str cat temp underscore file name, file name. And now we're using the string concatenation function that also comes with that string.h library. And we're appending on to this temp with the four underscores, 
the original file name. Basically putting this text here in front of the original file name as our temporary file name. There's other ways we could make temporary file names in C, but this should be sufficient for our purposes. Next, we'll ask the user for the line number to replace. So here we'll say printf replace line number to prompt the user for the value. And then we'll use a scanf with a percent %d and then and replace line to store the integer that's entered into the replace line variable. The next thing we're going to want to ask the user for is the actual replacement text. Before we do that, we're actually going to call the f flush function. So we'll say f flush stdin. So after using this scanf here, when the user enters an integer, there's technically going to be a new line character in the standard input stream. And what we want to do is flush that character out. Otherwise, our next function that's going to read in the replacement text is not going to work correctly. So here we'll say printf new line. And then we'll say f gets replace max line stdin. So we're going to prompt the user for the replacement text. And then f gets is going to store the input from standard input into the replace character array up to max line characters. Now, the reason why we had to flush standard in is the f gets function is going to stop reading characters into the replace character array when the first new line is encountered. Because this scanf technically leaves a new line character in the standard input stream, f gets would actually do nothing really if we didn't flush standard input first. So next we'll open up the original file as well as the temporary file. Here we'll say file is equal to f open file name r. And we're going to open up the original file for reading. And f open is going to return a pointer to that file that we're going to store to file. Here we'll say temp is equal to f open temp underscore file name w. And here we're opening up the temporary file for writing because we're going to be writing into that file. And again, f open is going to return the file pointer and it's going to be stored into temp. Now, if f open can't open one of these files, it's going to return null. We actually want to check for that before we proceed because we can't really do anything if the files haven't opened correctly. So here we'll say if the file pointer is null or the temp pointer is null, then we'll have a printf informing the user. We'll say error opening files. And we're going to return one. We're going to return one instead of returning zero because returning one is actually a signal to the terminal here, to the shell that something went wrong in the execution of our program. So now we can get into the fun stuff, which is actually reading through the original file, writing the content to the temporary file, except for that one line we want to replace. We're going to use a bool to help us here. We'll say here bool keep reading is equal to true. And as long as this Boolean variable keep reading is true, we're going to keep reading from the file. We're going to need another variable to keep track of the current line number that we're reading because we need to know when we've reached the line number that we want to replace in the file. So here we'll say int current line is equal to one to keep track of that. Now we'll make our loop to actually work through each line of the file. So here we'll say do and we'll do this while keep reading is true. And what we'll do is read the next line of the file into that buffer character array. So we'll say f gets buffer max line file. So read up to max line number of characters from the next line in the file into buffer. And the way f gets works is that when we call it again and again, it's going to keep on reading the next line in the file each time. Now, eventually, we're going to reach the end of the file. At that point, we can check if we've reached the end of the file using the function feof. 
So we'll say here, if FEOF file is true, then we're done our work. And we'll set keep reading to false because we've reached the end of the file. Otherwise, we want to check, is the current line number that we're reading in equal to the line number we want to replace? So we'll say else if current line is equal to replace line. And if this is true, we want to write that replacement line to the actual temporary file. So we'll say, if this is true, F puts replace to the temporary file. Otherwise, if this is not the case, if it's some other line in the file, we want to write to the file, the temporary file, what's in the buffer, what's in the original file that we just read in. So otherwise, just write to the temporary file, what's in the buffer, what we just read from the original file. So this should do it. Now we do have some cleanup code to do. First, we'll close both files because we're done working with them. So we'll say F close file and F close temp. And then next, we're going to want to delete the original file and rename the temporary file to the original file name. So we'll say remove file name to delete the original file. And then we'll say rename temp underscore file name, file name. So this should be it, except we've got to fix one really important bug first. So we said that current line was going to keep track of the current line number of the file that we're reading in, but we never increment it in this loop. So we've got to add that in. We'll say current underscore line plus plus, and we'll save it. And now this should do it. So we'll compile our program and then we'll run it and we'll enter file.txt. We'll say replace line number three with the text A, B, C, D, E, F, G. And if we check out file.txt after running our program, we'll see that A, B, C, D, E, F, G is in place of line three. So this is how we can replace a specific line of text in a file with C. Check out PortfolioCourses.com, where we'll help you build a portfolio that will impress employers, including courses to help you develop C programming projects.